This is BBC World News. The following programme contains scenes of a sexual nature. Norway. Two years ago, I came here to meet parents whose children had been taken away. They said the state was far too quick to put children into care without good reason. Now I'm back and there's still more anger in families torn apart. At one point I was thinking if I was mad, if I had uh, in my madness harmed my family without really knowing it. And now one of Norway's top child protection experts stands disgraced forced to reveal a secret he'd hidden all his working life. If he had told the church for 20 years, I'd been downloading child pornography, you know? Of course, he, he would never have been appointed as an expert. What does that mean for the troubled system he worked in? Th this Child Expert Commission reviews all the cases in the country. He was one of those people. He, he was one of these people mm -hmm. in this commission. Mm -hmm. Oh, my dear. I didn't know. Cecilia runs every day in the woods above her home in Oslo. Runs to calm herself, to forget. but she can't forget the day, years ago, that changed her life forever. When they came, uh, I let my daughter open the door. It was two child protection experts, their job to advise the authorities whether or not she could keep her child. I was very scared and I didn't want them in my house in the first place. I hadn't asked for them to come to my house and observe us together. Norway's Child Protection Service was worried about the little girl's development, but Cecilia had rejected offers of help. They thought she wasn't taking proper care of her daughter. So she took him up here? Yeah, she uh, took him up here. To the... During their visit, the experts, a male psychiatrist and a female psychologist, scrutinised everything that happened. My daughter, she said that, uh, I think she said she was hungry, she wanted something to eat. But uh, I, I had decided that I would cook a meal later, after the experts had left my house. And so I just offered her, would you like some chocolate balls, some chocolate cereal balls? And then uh, the expert, he, uh, he took that, uh, he, he wrote in the report that probably I am only giving her these uh, chocolate cereal balls all the time for every meal. That's the only thing. I don't know how to cook anything. So basically they misinterpreted everything? Yeah, they, they misinterpreted. It was, it was a distortion. Then I noticed that um, the female psychologist, she was, uh, she was looking uh, really intently at my ceiling. Like she was going like this. Uh, and then she noticed, uh, ah, there's a cobweb there. And then she, she wrote it down in the report, like it was something really, ah, you know, you can still see something there. Like I, uh, like my, yeah, to take it as a proof that my house was uh, messy. <laughs> or that it was not, not cleaned uh, properly, that it was not clean enough for uh, up to their standards, so. When you saw the report, what did you think when you actually saw what they'd written? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the report until after the, the emergency care order. And then I realised that, uh, well, the report was uh, very negative, that, uh, that the recommendation was that uh, my daughter had to be taken immediately. Cecilia's daughter was put into emergency foster care, and the decision was approved at Oslo District Court where the experts appeared as witnesses. Fast forward several years to April this year, and one of those two experts, the psychiatrist, reappeared in the same courthouse. This time, though, he wasn't in the witness stand, he was in the dock. 
I'm not going to name him, for a reason I'll come to later. But he's a man who played a key role, not just in Cecilia's case, but in those of many other families too. It was the trial of one expert, but it raises much wider questions about the whole Norwegian child protection system, a system that's been widely criticised for being too ready to take children away from their parents. Hello. Hi, you're, you're Rooney, yes? Yeah, that's right. Hi, nice, really nice to see you, Antje. Yeah, you too. Uh, and so the courtroom is over there? courtroom is over there. Okay. I can show you the... Rune Fardal is a veteran campaigner for the rights of families. Uh... So Rune, this is the courtroom, yes? You came here to observe the trial? Yes, I was sitting actually right here. Right. On this chair, I was mm -hmm. sitting mm -hmm. and following the whole trial. Yeah. I should warn you, the details that follow are quite unpleasant. Yeah. Uh, he already admitted doing this downloading of pornographic picture of uh, young boys. And the children in these images, how old were they? Uh, the majority, I think, was 10 until 14. But they were also very small babies. There was um, young boys having oral sex on each other and on uh, or gr grown-up men, uh, there was rape, uh, there was disabled children, uh, every, every fantasy you can think of in a bad way was explained there. So he's looking at these pictures of children being abused and he's never ever putting himself in the actual position of the children he's watching? No, he, he did not uh, put it like that. He, he didn't see that as being pedophile at all, looking at pictures of young children being misused by adults. In all, there were nearly 200,000 images of children, more than 4,000 hours of video. In passing sentence, the judge notes that the accused confessed his own guilt. But she adds this. The court finds that the accused, to a certain extent, trivialises his own actions. The court furthermore sees it as serious that a professional who is supposed to be the protector of children and young people has placed his own satisfaction and desires first in this matter. The influence of that disgraced expert has been felt here too, in a small town in the south of Norway. His judgment has played a role in keeping this family divided for several years. So do you think you're the largest family in the town with eight children? Eight children, it's, that's a rarity here. Because that was, you know, that would be the question people would ask us. Which children are yours and which children are your husband's and which children are your joint children? And we were like, they're from the same factory. As well as being mother to eight children, Inez is active as a local politician and lay judge. She thought of her home as loving, if lively, but five years ago, four of her children were suddenly taken away by child protection services known as Barnaverna. I got a phone call from someone telling me that um, I have to come home. The Barnaverna has taken the children and my hubby had been arrested. Your husband had been arrested? Yes. It was so absurd. Obviously, it was a mistake. And then when I came there, they said I was arrested. When the, when the door to the cell was closed, that's when I realized what, what it meant. And it was... Um, so strange to, to find myself in a cell. And I just remember being so scared because this, this was madness. What, what is this? What is, what's happening in our country? There'd been allegations of violence in the home. The father was soon released without charge, but Inez was accused of smacking her children, which is outlawed in Norway. One had said that uh, I had hit her, and everybody said that our youngest son had, had been smacked because he bite. You know, I would hear, hear 
a child crying out in pain and I'd, you know, I'd come running to help and I would call out his name and then I gave him a smack in order for him to let go of his sibling. But Inez's explanations were rejected and her four youngest children were put into foster care. Well, at, uh, at one point I was thinking if I was, um, if I was mad, if I had, uh, you know, in my madness been doing things that I wasn't supposed to do, had I harmed my family without really knowing it. That was my thoughts. Um, just the thought of being very, very scared and frightened. My heart is beating so fast. There's gunshots, there's sirens, this bridge is totally not stable. I really want to reach the top. Where others see a challenge, we see an opportunity. Where some see limits, we see adventure. Wow. We don't travel to escape life, we travel to live it. Ah, do you see how close I came to a taxi? Brave the Unknown, The Travel Show on BBC World News. Take away the noise. The fury. The fighting voices. The distortions. The cosmetics. The color and the flashy effects. But most of all, you can take away the lies. The slander. And the misrepresentation. And it seeks to pull us apart. And then? And then. Then you can find out what's actually happened. And when you find that, then you'll find BBC News. In her battle to get the children back, to try to prove she's a good enough mother to them, Inez has been helped by lawyer Victoria Holman. Victoria believed there was a serious flaw in the case against Inez. The problem was every question was leading questions. And when you analysed the reports, what the children actually said, if you was, if you was counting up how many times did they say that m my mother was violenced against me? Zero. They never actually said, no. my mother was violent Zero. to me. Zero. Inez was acquitted in a criminal trial of using violence against the children. Two of her children were then returned, but the youngest are still in foster care more than two years later. That's despite a report from two of Norway's most respected psychologists which praised Inez's parenting skills and recommended that the family be reunited. We find it impossible to believe that so carefree, positive and undisruptive children can come from the home described in the accounts that form the basis of the child protection and police actions. So why was that conclusion disregarded? because it was rubbished by two other child specialists from a supervisory body, Norway's Child Expert Commission. One of them was the now convicted and disgraced psychiatrist who had also played a key role in putting Cecilia's daughter into care. This document is where it went wrong. This document is the conclusion of, uh, from the Expert Commission and the problem for the Commission is that the report from the psychologists is uh, too uh, biased towards the parents. That's what they say? Yes, yeah, that's what Th that's they say. What, yeah. uh, and this is actually from the, the psychiatrist who's now been yes. convicted. He said that this, the psychologist's reports in this case were too biased in favour of the parents. Too biased in favour of the parents, yeah. I would look into that case and say... The co-author of that allegedly biased report was Reda Hjerman. The judge almost always agrees with the expert. He's Norway's former child ombudsman, the official responsible for guarding children's interests throughout the country. So I assume he knows all about the disgraced expert. 
one of the most experienced, prominent child psychiatrists working partly in the child welfare system was convicted of downloading a very large amount of child pornography. W what question marks does that raise over the system? I wouldn't say that this has something to do with, uh, with this system at all. You will find rotten eggs in any basket. And, uh, and still, uh, sometimes people who have done bad things, they also do things that is quite good and normal. But th there's a child expert commission, the, the Bears car, reviews all the cases in the country. He was one of those people. Yeah, he, he was one of these people mm -hmm. in this commission. Mm -hmm. Oh, my dear. I didn't know. There was an occasion, in a case that we've been looking at ourselves, where he, he criticised you personally and criticised your professional judgement very harshly. Was that the same person? Yes. He actually criticised your professional opinion. Yes, he did. And I disagreed with this very much. And I was um, quite angry when I received this. And um, it makes me think, of course, if this is the same person, then... That is the same person. Because what happened after this was that these children's case would, of course, be treated in the light of, of this comment on my report. Correct. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. There's been no discussion of the wider implications of this case in the Norwegian media, no shock or outrage in the newspapers, no apologies or excuses or explanations offered by the authorities that employed the disgraced expert. And as far as I can discover, there are no plans for a full review of the child protection decisions that he was involved in. The Expert Commission says it's looked through his reports and found no reason for concern. Other child protection agencies I contacted won't comment on his conviction. but that won't satisfy families whose children were taken away following his involvement in their cases. Well, I, I would say that uh, that expert, he has, uh, he, uh, he, he's the one, um, he's, uh, he's responsible for taking my daughter away. And then it turns out that he has himself committed uh, crimes against children. And I just think yeah, the, the thing, what has happened is wrong, you know. It has had very grave consequences on my life. In fact, the report that the convicted expert co-authored followed several years of concern by many health and social work professionals that Cecilia had neglected her daughter. But she rejected that charge. Rejected, too, the report's conclusion that the child's potential development would be limited if she stayed with her mother. It, it, it's not valid. He's, uh, what he's saying is not valid. They can't... Uh, because? Because of what he has done against... I mean, he was, uh, he was uh, hiding from the court that he, was, that he was breaking the law, you know? So, I mean, if he had told the church, yes, and on my spare time, I, for 20 years, I've been downloading child pornography, you know? Uh, I mean, he would have... Of course, he, he would never have been appointed as an expert. The child psychiatrist was convicted and sentenced to nearly two years in jail. So why has he not been named? Because he himself is the father of young children. They're entitled to privacy, and the authorities have already said they can stay with their father when he's released. That decision has surprised many parents and campaigners, though others say there's no reason for outrage. So this is the fjord that links us, what goes fjord. across to Sweden. Yeah. Tora Langfeldt is Norway's most famous sexologist. 
He was an independent expert witness in the case of the disgraced psychiatrist. And he says all custody decisions should be based on evidence, not moral panic. We have um, lots amount of uh, data showing that uh, only a little part of those who are uh, downloading pictures of children are really offending children. So uh, we can't generalize there and we have no empirical data that really can show the, the clear link between it, but it's... Between downloading pictures yeah. and, and actually physically abusing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yourself abusing children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this is about the credibility of the system, isn't it? It's not really about one man, it's about the issue of the, of, of the system that employed him. Yeah, but you could, I mean, what do you mean by the system that employed him? They just shouldn't have employed him, but they didn't know, I mean, so they didn't know anything when they employed him. I mean, we can't turn the clock backwards. Because what would happen? I mean, it would lead to massive compensation claims. Yeah, I think so. And I think the system would collapse, I think. We wouldn't be able to, to handle it. So it's better to sometimes say, let the sleeping dog sleep. Mm. But families who've lost children aren't prepared to do that. You know, it's a tsunami of grief that hits parents when, when things like this happen. Child Protection have now finally told Inez they think she is a good enough mother. She hopes to get her youngest two back soon. But she's joined the campaign for reform of the system, a campaign that includes many leading Norwegian professionals in the field as well as parents. It's so easy to sweep things on the cup, but when it's uncomfortable. And I think, you know, in regards to systems, when things are uncomfortable, it has to come up, it has to surface. It has to be fixed, because if we allow it to happen, it can happen again and again and again. And it's so easy to dismiss the fact that, you know, it didn't happen to me. It's, it's OK. But what about the day it happens to you, unless you are willing to help and change something when it affects others? There has to be a willingness to that. And there has to be a willingness to fix things so that it ensures people to trust the system. The government and the Child Protection Service refused our requests for a comment on this case. They haven't been challenged hard over it within Norway, perhaps, because this is a society that tends overall to trust the state. But parents increasingly don't. The Ministry of Children says legal safeguards for families are now being strengthened. But Norway's silent scandal can only shake their confidence in the system still further. I can remember my daughter as a very happy child. She was uh, always very smiling, happy. She was living. I could never have imagined that this could happen to someone like me at all. And I, I had a very good relationship with my daughter. I did. And I will never really get her back. <laughs> 